Spina bifida, also known as cleft spine, is when there is incomplete closure of the spine before birth. This birth defect typically occurs by the sixth week of gestation and is the most common birth defect in the United States. There is no known cause of spina bifida, although it is believed that low levels of folic acid in the mother may play a role in its occurrence. There are varying forms of spina bifida. There is spina bifida occulta, where the bones of the spine do not close, but the spinal cord and meninges remain in the spine and the defect is covered by skin. There is also meningocele's in which the tissue covering the spinal cord sticks out of the defect, but the spinal cord remains in place. Myelomeningocele is the most common type of spina bifida. It is characterized by an incomplete spinal canal in which the spinal cord and meninges protrude from the infant's back at birth. It requires surgery to correct. In addition, 90% of children affected with myelomeningocele also have hydrocephalus, which is a buildup of cerebrospinal fluid on the brain. Hydrocephalus often requires shunting to drain fluid since the buildup can cause brain damage. The effects of spina bifida depend on the area of the defect. Typically, the lower the defect is on the spine, the child can face double incontinence, as well as walking difficulty, or even a degree of paralysis. The higher the defect on the spine, the chances of incontinence are less, but the walking difficulty and degree of paralysis are greater. Children with spina bifida suffer from nonverbal disabilities such as disorganization, math and writing difficulty, and inability to recognize social cues. These students also tend to be very social. Despite the physical incapability this birth defect can cause, it often does not affect children mentally. To modify FFA participation for this type of student, there are a variety of possibilities. If the student's needs require them to refrain from physically attending FFA activities, they can always participate in simple things such as dressing up for FFA spirit days. Most FFA events are held in handicap accessible places, which enables this student to attend almost any event. I would definitely encourage them to attend regular meetings. To assist this student in utilizing their verbal powers, they could be the announcer for the donkey basketball or section basketball game. I would also encourage them to participate in public speaking events, especially the impromptu contest, as the contest is short and the memorization of long speeches isn't necessary. Since it is recommended that this student can benefit from group interaction, I would recommend that they be part of the Ag Leadership class. They would spend the school year being a part of the most dedicated FFA students who plan and carry out the events for the year. Or they could join a committee such as community service, program of activities, scrapbook, or third grade field day. This type of student would also make a great presenter at a third grade field day booth or any other FFA outreach booth for that matter. I'm not so sure that modify is the correct term for what can be done in FFA for a student with spina bifida or any other exceptionality. We simply need to help them find their strength in the organization so that they can shine in that respect. As Temple Grandin would say, they may be different, but they are not less.